Hello and welcome back to Hostify. My name's Alex and today we're going to be looking at what makes up a wireless internet service provider, better known as a WISP. In many countries around the world, you'll find that some areas are covered by WISPs. These can be anything from large companies to small independent one-person organisations. These smaller ones are more common in the US, but they do exist here in the UK too. According to WISPA in the UK, there are around 120 independent companies operating WISPs. These are generally referred to as altnets and specialise in wireless and fibre as a means to get connectivity to its customers. Many of the WISPs in the UK were originally set up to plug the holes in the broadband rollout, which going back a decade or so was really slow going. As the big players are finally catching up, these altnets are now pivoting to fibre optic rollouts, in addition to its fixed wireless access, or FWA for short. According to WISPA, there are around 2,700 WISPs operating in the US today, and many of them are small, rural, independent companies. Before we go any further, please consider subscribing to the host of our YouTube channel. We create video guides about Unify, UISP and Team Plicomada on a regular basis. If you need hosting for any of these platforms, check out our website at hostify.com and get started today. By name, a WISP is an Internet Service Provider, or ISP, that uses primarily wireless technology to get connectivity to homes and businesses. The amount of wireless used in the technology makeup can vary from geography and locations. Sometimes, some WISPs use a large fibre optic backbone with strategically placed masts. Sometimes, this can also be interconnecting wireless too. To the end user, the experience of using the internet from a WISP will not feel any different. If designed well, the internet connection can have similar latency to fibre-based connections. Real-time streaming, gaming and voice over IP calls can also work without any side effects. Interestingly, Ubiquiti got its start providing hardware and software to these types of companies, with the original Nanostation, then Airmax, Airfiber and many, many more. Nowadays, providing products to the WISP industry makes up a very small part of the company's financials, but WISPs do rely on the software and hardware Ubiquiti makes in order to operate their businesses. Ubiquiti literally sells pretty much all you need to get a WISP off the ground. UISP, which you can host with Hostify, has CRM, billing, network management, ticketing and scheduling. Then for the hardware, Ubiquiti has routing hardware aimed at ISPs with Edgemax and the UISP hardware itself. Wireless backhaul with their fibre, point to multipoint hardware with Airmax and LTU, and then UISP fibre for fibre based connections. Finally, power backup solutions with UISP power, Edge power and SolarPoint. All of these can be added to the UISP application. A common comparison to a WISP is satellite based broadband which prior to the highly successful Starlink product from SpaceX was very much a last resort. Due to how low the satellites are from Starlink, the service they provide is actually very good. However, due to lower upload speeds, it might not be a replacement for fiber optic or WISP based internet for some people. Satellite broadband traditionally doesn't offer public IP addresses and instead using carrier grade NAT or CG NAT for short. This can bring some challenges when using remote services and voice over IP. Although Starlink does offer public IP addresses now, this can be costly. So that's been a look at what a WISP is and what equipment is used. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing. My name's Alex and I'll see you again next time.